Hello, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ow. Ow who? Werewolves of London. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Marvel Villainous from Ravensburger. In Marvel Villainous from Ravensburger, two to four players take on the roles of the various Marvel villains from the comic books as they attempt to attain dominance by achieving their singular objective first. Now this game is very similar to Disney Villainous, which came out just a few years ago. It's got a lot of the same kind of basic core rules here, but there are a few changes, a few differences. But first of all, let's take a look at the villains. The villains in this set are Ultron, you get Hela, You've got Killmonger, you've got Taskmaster, and then you've got the big baddie himself, Thanos. One of the big differences between this and Disney Villainous is how the fate cards work. Now, in Disney Villainous, of course, you have each character has the fate card, and you would take a fate card from them, and then you decide which one to play on them. But in this version, you actually have a common fate deck. Now, some of the cards are going to target specific uh, characters, and they may be more powerful against them. But generally speaking, you're just going to pull from that, and you can play it on anyone it's going to work better with some than others, as I say. Now, you also have event cards, and event cards come up out of the Fate deck, and they're going to provide specific locations that may prevent players from doing certain things until that particular Fate is sealed. And you can all play allies to that particular event to try to kind of overcome it in order to free that up so that you can do whatever your nefarious scheme tells you to do. Now, the different players have different objectives. For instance, Thanos has Infinity Stones that go to different places, and he's trying to play them, uh, you know, try to try to, to uh, steal them from other people. You've got the um, uh, Ultron, and he's, of course, got his sentries that he's sending out and doing all sorts of kooky things. Um, but, of course, they each have their own unique objective. One other difference is strength tokens. For instance, these strength tokens are usually plus and minus a certain number. You can put those on uh, allies or... or, or uh, uh, you know, hero cards or whatever to kind of make them stronger or easier to defeat as the game goes by. But each turn, just like in Disney Villainous, you are moving your character to their own location, you're gaining power, you are relocating uh, certain cards around the play area, you are activating certain powers you've got, you're playing uh, some of your ally cards, you're activating uh, items, you're doing all these things in an attempt to reach whatever your specific objective is. And just like Disney Villainous, you each have your own special objective booklet, which kind of tells you what strategy you should adopt in order to attain your objective. And whoever is first in obtaining their objective wins Marvel Villainous. So Marvel Villainous is a game that, of course, takes the Marvel system with a new IP, or takes the villainous system, rather, with a new IP, which is really cool. And I, you can see a lot of different IPs this would work with. So this is, it's pretty cool, and, and it's, it's pretty neat how they've done that and integrated it into Marvel, which of course is huge now thanks to the uh, Marvel movies. Uh, but I gotta say something. Uh, I was talking to uh, Zach, who uh, I was playing this with. Uh, I played with him a few times now. And he said, you know, for him, with the Marvel movies, and he's not the comic book reader, he knows the, these characters from the movies, he said, to him, in the Marvel movies, the villains were always the weakest character, with the possible exception of Thanos. He, he was not a big fan of, of, of the Marvel villains in a lot of those movies, and a lot of them was just an evil version of the hero, right? Um, so I can see his point there. But nevertheless, I, I liked it. I thought this was a good idea and a fun idea, and I was really excited to play it. And I played it a couple of times, and I played a few of the different characters. And um, let me say this right now. I freaking love the Common Fate deck. I think the Common Fate deck and the way that works is so much better. It's so superior to the Disney version. I think, I really, really think that is just really superior. I have a lot of fun with that. It plays smoother, plays better. Um, sometimes you get some hiccups and some weird things happen and you draw a card that doesn't really do anything to anybody. That still happens, but it's just, I like it a lot better than the, than, you know, just taking a couple from one character and giving one. I, 
that to me was always a weak part of, of Disney Villainous. And I, and I like Disney Villainous a lot, but that was kind of a weak part. But I really like the common fate deck here in, in this version. I like the events too. I think that just throws a little spice and sugar, makes things a little bit more difficult. Um, I like, and I like that too. I think that's a fun a addition to this game. But where I have some problems with the game is um, I, I almost kind of feel like it wasn't play tested enough with the characters. Um, and I say that because Thanos, one would think, would probably be the easiest guy to play, and he's actually really hard. Thanos is really hard to play. And not only that, but um, there's a lot of ambiguity in a lot of the cards. For instance, Ultron, you know, it says at one point it's like, you know, uh, when you get to this point, remove two of your sentries to achieve this, but it doesn't say how you do that. And it's like, do I just do it? And that's, yeah, that's what you do. But it's very vague, and it makes it sound as though you actually need to take a step or do an action or something to do it. And it just, stuff like that is very amb ambiguous, and I wish that had been a little better worked out. And stuff like that kept coming up a lot in the games we played. Now, uh, Max, who is Zach's son, he's he's played this game a couple of times now, and he's a big fan of, of Disney villainous. And he was not terribly impressed with this version. Uh, he thought it was, um, he, he just said it wasn't as fun. He thought it was a little bit harder than, than the other version. Zach was kind of, he thought it was okay. Zach, Zach thought this was an okay version of, of the game. But again, I think he likes Disney better. And I think <clears throat> both of them are huge Disney fans to begin with. So, so that I think maybe played into it with the IP. Speaking for myself, you know, gun to my head, if, if you're going to say, do you want to play Disney Villainous or play Marvel Villainous, I'd probably say, I'd probably lean toward Disney because with all the expansions, there's just more variety there. But, honestly, this system works better generally. And I think if there was more, if they come out with more expansions for this one, then I'd probably go with this one because I really like that Common Fate deck. And I'm certainly hoping as they put out new heroes and new expansions with this, which I hope they do, they are... There's less ambiguity there, and it's more easier to understand from a rules perspective. But I generally like this one quite a bit. Um, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to give this one a very, very positive try it before you buy it. I think if you like Marvel, you'll like this game. I think if you like Villainous, you'll like this game. I just, the only real reservation I have is some of that ambiguity is just, it, it's, it doesn't belong there, and it didn't need to be there. And that's going to drive some people crazy. And I'll tell you right now, if I play this again, I, I'm probably not going to play Ultron again, because I, I don't know, I might, but it just, I probably won't play Thanos again, because Thanos was pretty tough. Hell is pretty cool. Um, but, but my point is, there's, there's some problems that I, I think could be solved with maybe even an FAQ or something like that. But, but regardless, try it before you buy it, uh, positive try it before you buy it, I think a lot of people are going to get a kick out of it. Thank you once again for joining us today for The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We are The Discriminating Gamer. And you know, folks, I... Hey, Cody, knock, knock. Who's there? Cody. Cody who? Cody's an idiot. <laughs> 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 oh. oh, he's never gonna live that one down. <laughs>